As you may know, the world right now is in kind of a mess and money is getting harder and harder to come by and it's worth less and less every day. So with all of that going on, not every single one of us has money to spend on IEMs, especially luxurious Endgame or even mid-fi IEMs. So the question is, how do we get high quality audio while spending as little as $20. Hey guys, Timmy, welcome back to the video on Gives Audio. And today we're going to touch on the topic as a whole of how to upgrade your IEMs or how to get better sound quality for free from units that you already own at home. Now, there are two main ways to achieve this. And number one is very basic, but it's often overlooked, especially if you're newer into the hobby. And that is to get the perfect seal when you're wearing your IEMs. This is extremely important for getting the ideal bass response because even a little bit of leakage can cause the bass to not sound as full or as complete as it should be. And a lot of leakage can cause you to not really hear a lot of bass at all. The least perfect your seal is, the less the bass. And of course, that affects your overall sound signature of the IEM dramatically. Now you might be wondering, how do I get the perfect seal? Well, change the tips. Maybe the ear tips that you're using right now might not be the best fit for your ears, so just swap them out, try out different ones, or maybe try to shove them a little bit deeper into your ears. And another issue, although a little bit more rare, has to do with the cables that you're using. Some cables are not really built the best and sometimes have stranger ear hook shape. Maybe they're stiffer around this area, not the most flexible. And some of those cables can actually result in you having less of an ideal seal. Now, speaking of ear tips and getting the perfect seal, did you know that a deeper insertion depth actually can help improve the overall quality of the treble? Not always, but from my personal experience, it helps improve the treble quality way more times than it does the opposite. The deeper the insertion normally gets you smoother treble and also better extension. Just as a quick example, take a look at this Seijin Wu Heyday Edition and see how a deeper fit affects the overall treble. It is much smoother and better extending than a shallower fit. So when picking ear tips, try to pick ones that allows you to insert your IEMs deeper into your ears. Now, I don't know a whole lot about ear tips, but here are some of my favorite ear tips that I've used throughout the years. Number one being my most recent discovery, the S&S ear tips from Duno. These have been literally a godsend for me. I use the medium size and large size, and they always work for me, always a perfect seal regardless of the IEM. My second choice would either be the spin fits or the Astla Sedna Fits. Now, I don't know the exact model of spin fits that I use, but any of these two, I generally have a really good experience with. All right, point number two on how to get better sound quality for free, and that is to learn how to EQ. Now, I know a lot of you guys right now are leaving the video because you guys don't want to EQ, but it is so, so useful, especially if you live in an area where you can't demo a lot of units or you want to save money in general while still getting to try a whole bunch of sound signatures, all for free from the IEM that you already have. Learning how to EQ is like unlocking some magic door into the audio hobby that people who don't EQ would never understand. Now, I can do a whole video, an hour long, dedicated to just EQ alone and all the tools and software that are possible out there on the market, but someone kind of already did. And I'm gonna plug his video right here by Critical himself. Watch this video if you want a more in-depth look into EQ. In this video, I'm just gonna cover the basics on how to get you started. Now, how to EQ. A lot of you guys are probably familiar with this already. You find this in every single one of your phones that you ever own. This is the most basic form of EQ, though not the most effective or the most accurate one. So we'll be skipping this one for now. The method that we'll be focusing on today is called the auto EQ function. And it's available on pretty much every squeak site that is out there. So here we are on the squeak site. I hope you guys can see my mouse moving. We're gonna go over over to this equalizer tab right here. And as you can see, this little mess of things. Now this might look a little bit scary, but I promise you it's not at all. Now let's pick some IEMs to EQ. First, let's get rid of my target. I'm gonna go with Dewan Er because most of you probably own Dewan Er, it's $20. Now let's say you really love Dewan Er, but you're curious on what the Sony IR C1R might sound like. So let's go over to the C1R, C1R. 
add that onto the curve, go over to equalizer, and you can just click the auto EQ button. But not yet. Let's change this first. Auto EQ range 20 hertz to 6,000 hertz. Now there's a reason we do this, and that's because we shouldn't auto EQ trouble. More on that later. But now you can just click the auto EQ. And there you go. Let's hide the one er curve now. Now you have the one er that is EQ'd to the C1R. Now, of course, it's not 100% accurate, but it should give you a rough image on what the C1R can potentially sound like. Now, the reason we don't auto EQ past 6K Hertz is because treble graphs are not accurate. As I stated early on in the video, how deep an IEM is inserted can affect the treble response. Not only that, the tips that you use can and will affect treble response at the same time. Hence, the treble response you see on these graphs are not the most accurate representation on what you're gonna be hearing yourself. Thus, it's not a good idea to auto EQ past 6K Hertz. Now back to the original one or graph for now, and I'll show you another thing that you can do. Let's say if you want to just copy the C1R's bass profile, I mean, you like the mid range and treble area of the one or already, but you just want that C1R bass, what do you do? So first, let's go to equalizer again, select the one or and just change the range from 20 Hertz to maybe let's say 300 hertz this time auto eq now you have the one er with a c1r like bass curve same thing can be done with any other ranges as well let's say you want to copy the upper mid range only then you input maybe 1k all the way to 6000 and auto eq now you have the one er with the c1r's upper mids only now what's next you're done with your eqing you actually want to hear this now on your phone or on your DAP. Well, first, click the Export Graphic EQ for Wavelet. It will download a text file for you, as you can see down here. Import this into your phone somehow. I usually just upload this to my Google Drive and download onto my phone from there. And from your Android phone or DAP, download the app that's called Wavelet. Once you have the app, open it, make sure Spotify, Tidal, or any other music software is playing or else you won't get to the screen that I'm on right now. Go to Auto EQ. Also make sure your IEM is plugged in as well or else you won't see the Auto EQ tab. All right, once you're into the Auto EQ part, click the headphone model button. As you can see, I have so many presets imported already, but now just click import at the bottom here. Select your file, let's say this one. Now it's imported, but not applied yet. Click the headphone model button again. Again, find the file you just imported, click on it, and boom, it's now applied. The EQ is working. Congratulations, now you know how to auto EQ. Auto EQ is an extremely, extremely powerful tool, but it's not the only way to EQ using the squeak site. The other way, of course, is to do it manually by adjusting these um, values yourself. Now, I'm not gonna go into that all today. This is more for your own self-discovery. Play around, have fun with it. And now that we know how to EQ, let's go over a couple rules to stand by when EQing IMs. Rule number one again is never to auto EQ treble. You can EQ individual treble values if you know what you're doing, but don't auto EQ. You're going to end up getting very inaccurate results. Rule number two, don't use EQ to fix anything majorly wrong with your IEM. It's better to get a smooth template, or I should say get an already good IEM with preferably smoother looking graph, then use EQ to enhance or fix minor issues that that IEM have. It will sound much better than you trying to fix a really bad looking IEM. Now lastly, I do have a short list of IEMs I recommend you guys to get for your EQing adventures. The cheapest one being the Tangsu One Er, $20. The graph looks really good. The treble quality also already really good as well. Number two choice is the Truth Ear Hexa, has good treble extension already, and the graph itself is again, smooth. For the more expensive set, I highly recommend the Moondrop Variations and also the DA Audio Monarch Mark II. Both of those, again, smooth graph and also great treble extension. Smooth treble extension as well. And smooth treble is actually really important because again, hard to fix treble in EQ. So better to already have good treble from the start. All right, that is it for this video today. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that was informative and not too confusing. Enjoy your new journey into EQing IEMs and saving hundreds and hundreds of dollars on 
buying random things. And with all of that being said, I'd like to thank my Patreon subscriber now. We have Kay, Shadwick, Suni Roll, Norm, and also Mr. Mason. If any of you want to support the channel yourself, link to Patreon is down below. And with all that being said, hope you guys have a great day. I'll see you guys next time. Peace. Bye.